Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd, as well as my friends at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today is the Party People Crochet Pullover. This is available in multiple of sizes, starting from extra small all the way to five extra large. You're going to see the number of Vogos that you need for the different sizes. Of course, the bigger the sweater, the more yarn it will take. Today, I'm going to be demonstrating with Karen One Pound, and I will be using one and a half balls of the Karen One Pound just for the extra small to small size, just for perspective on the amount of yarn that I'll use. You'll use a six millimeter size J crochet hook and here are the bust sizes just in case you want to measure those first before attempting it and here's the gauge of 13 stitches and 10 rows in the pattern itself. So let me talk about the difference of the pattern. You will need to know how to read patterns a little bit to be able to pull the information as I'm demonstrating today because I'm just doing the extra small but you can just follow the information here on the pattern to be able to do the size you want. Over the last several years, Yarn Inspirations has the patterns that are color coded. So you can see the different colors equal the different sizes. So whenever there's a decision to be made within the pattern, you will follow what this is. If you are colorblind, it's always in the same order of extra small, medium, large, extra large, two to three extra large, and four to five extra large. And you can find the information. So when we go over to the pattern itself and there's a decision to be made, you have to be able to follow that. So for example, when we start the ribbing, chain 10, you notice that there is no color coding and there's no parenthesis. It means that everybody is going to be doing a chain 10. It's not until you get up here that you can see up here. It says repeat the last row until the ribbing, ribbing measures 19, 21, 23, 24 and a half, 28, or 31 and a half. So you're going to choose the size that you want. What I do recommend is just go ahead and just maybe circle the number that you're looking for each and every time, even though it's color coded, um, it helps you also keep track of that as well. So whenever there's a decision to be made, we'll be referencing that as we go through the pattern. And this pattern is really not a big deal. On page number four, you're going to find a crochet diagram. When I started this, I was doing stitch night and I decided to do the sleeve because the sleeve is much smaller than the body. And what I realized is that I was screwing it up so bad because I wasn't understanding the pattern. So I ended up having to rip everything out. I brought it home and I redid it at home. But what I did at home is that I started the body first. And once I did the body that we'll be doing uh, right off the hop after we get the bottom ribbing done that you can see here, the ribbing and the ribbing. Once you get that done, you're just going to do the body. Once I did the body, I came to understand how this pattern is working. So, so you'll see in the rows that you go, one row, there's a delay of where the V stitch goes and the next row, it's right immediately after the first stitch. So it's just every other row once it got that, once it got that done. Here in the sleeve, what I realized is that it's every three rows. And so the first row is very much like row number three, just going up, there's a delay. So you jumping after the next V stitch going in, you'll see that on both sides. Number four, there is two half double crochets in the first stitch and one immediately after the first one and the same thing on the other side. And then row number five, it's just getting established and being able to settle down in order to make the pattern and then you restart three, four, five. So what I did for myself is that I created this checklist, sleeve number one, sleeve number two, and then I just said, there's repeats that are involved in this and you'll see that within the pattern itself. So what I did is set repeat one, here's rows three, four, five, row two, three, or sorry, repeat two, three, four, five. And I just wrote the number as I completed it so that if I ever walked away, I wouldn't know what it was. But I found myself it went fast enough that I didn't even have to go up to get P in between doing all of the sleeve work itself and then went, did a P break and then did sleeve number two. So everything starts off with the ribbing at the very base, and we'll talk about that next. So here's the base of the sleeve. You can see the ribbing is there. So the sleeves have a smaller length ribbing. So we're gonna do rib, 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 rib. We'll go all the way back. And once we have the distance we want, we're then going to start the rows going back this way. So we originally start going this way, and then we change to go over. So when we look at the bigger panels that you have, just this is the bigger um, front piece. You can see that this ribbing is much longer, but in order to have it uh, balance out, you just have to make sure that you get the right amount of stitches and just be able to count the first time you do your half double crochets to keep it consistent, which I did. And you also wanna keep an eye on your 
right side and your wrong side. So I put a stitch marker saying that when I go to attach this with the, the, uh, the sweater, that this is the right side. So this is the side that people will see when they're looking at it. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to teach you how to do the ribbing and then you can substitute the ribbing information and I can show everything on that little sample that I will show you right off the hop. And we're gonna begin that next. So let's talk ribbing. Ribbing here is chain 10, and then you're going to single crochet second chain from the hook and then one in each. And then you're gonna do um, the next row and do chain one, one single crochet in the back loop only. And you will repeat that here for the back and the front panel until it's the size that you want. So it can be 19 inches all the way up to 31 and a half. So you stop when you have that and it's slightly stretched and you need to end on a wrong row. So I'm gonna have you place a stitch marker on the right side so that you know what the wrong side row is. When you're doing the same thing for the sleeves, it is again chain 10 and it'll be the same information of what you did, but the difference is, is that it's either going to be 10 inches long all the way to 12 inches long for the sleeves. So I'm going to show you the ribbing and it's gonna apply for both of them that you'll need to know that. And then from that point, I'm going to then show you the differences between the front uh, panel and the sleeves, the front and the back panel, and then the sleeves because the sleeves have growth to go outward. Let's begin the ribbing. So let's begin, and I got a stitch marker here just off camera. Make sure that this is long enough that you may wanna use it to sew it later. Okay, so don't be cheap about it. So now we're going to chain 10 using a six millimeter size J hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Once you have this, we're gonna begin row number one. In row number one, you're gonna go second chain from the hook, so count it back, one and two, get the back hump of the chain, it'll look nicer. If you decide not to, that's your business. So just single crochet in each of the chains, just do about the first three, and I want you to pause for a moment. So we got the first three in, and I want you to put in a stitch marker here. So just going around the post, just go through and back out here, sorry. So let's place a stitch marker on the second one. So just going in between the stitch and back out the front side, grab a spare piece of yarn or a stitch marker and just pull it through and just loop it around. So whenever you see the dangling of the stitch marker, you will know that this is the right side of the work, okay? So when you turn it around, you won't see that dangly thing, you'll just see that there. So now I want you to single crochet across your chain, just like I showed, was showing you. And there will be a total count of nine stitches all the way across. Coming up to my last stitch, I'm going to then turn. So you're going to turn and you're gonna do row two until you get to the size that you need to get to. So you're just gonna chain one and you're gonna go through the back loop only to create the ribbing. So just turn it so that you can see it. And you're going to go to the loop that's furthest away from you and you're just gonna dive in. So when I turn, I kind of put it like this and I'm just gonna go into the back loop only. And then once I get the first one in, I can turn the whole thing and make it a lot easier. So I'm just going to do the back loops only all the way across, then turn and then just go all the way back. So you're just gonna go back and forth. What I did for myself, instead of just moving on to the body panel, I did all of this the, the ribbing for each of the sleeves and the front and the back at the same time. Because I had marked the right side, it was easy for me to pick it back up in order to complete um, the remaining of the sections. So yes, I did have to change out my yarns in order to do that, but it was easier for me because I was in stitch night and it's just easier for me to do the non-hard stuff. So just turn your work and just do the back loop only. So go until you get to the size that you want. So just look at your sleeve distance whether it was 10 inches or 212, depending on your size. And then in the front or the body panel, it could be 19 inches all the way to 31 and a half, depending on your size. So just uh, do that. And we're gonna end on the wrong side, which I will show you that in just a moment. So I'm here at the end of the ribbing, whether it's the cuff or the bottom of the front or the back panel, it's kind of the same information. The difference is, is that the, the distance is different. So if this, this was the sleeve that I was doing, so I needed to hit 10 inches and it's gotta be slightly stretched and it's also got to be on the wrong side when I finish. So when I, when I'm finished here, I should be looking at the wrong side of the work and I can tell because when I go to flip this up the other way, then I need to make sure that it's, it's going to work. So now what I need to do is that I need to move on and start 
crocheting across the top. So let me take you back to the pattern now. So let's talk the front and the back. You would have gone either to 19 all the way to 31 and a half, depending on the size. You want to finish on the wrong side of the row. Okay. And so it says WS wrong side of the row. And then the next row is that you're going to chain one and work evenly 65 or all the way to 105, depending on the size, all the way across the top of the ribbing, just like you see. Therefore, you're going to get that done. If you are doing the sleeve work, what's going to happen is that you are going to get your size done all the way from 10 inches to 12, depending on the size. And then the next row is you're going to chain one and you're going to either do 35 all the way to 45 single crochets across the top of the edge. Okay, so what we do on the top of that matters and you need to keep account, just equally space out, the, out that information. And then that is the same for all of the instructions. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna demonstrate the front and the back panel first and uh, therefore we're gonna get that done and then I'm gonna bring you back and show you how to do the increasing for the ribbing after, or for the sleeves. So I tend to write on my patterns when I go to uh, teach myself how to do this. So where we are right now is that we are at the body of the die, or of the body, and so each one of these, there's single crochets under here. This is the sleeve, this is the body. So we wanna equally space the number of stitches that we wanted across the ribbing that is appearing under here. And then after this point, you're going to notice that it's gonna be slightly different than what uh, you've done before. So I'm going to now take you to doing that first, and then we're gonna go into the front and the body next. So here is the diagram. So we have the front and the back panel, and we also have the sleeve diagram. So the sleeve will continuously get bigger in a V formation, okay? And the body will stay as a rectangle. So what we need to do for the body uh, here is that we're going to go to a certain height that you need and you can measure it all the way to here and then you're going to do an indentation in and then you're going to finish the remaining of it. So what I need you to do is that I am going to demonstrate on how this is done uh, for the indentation in. So the, the front panel that I have is actually only done to this moment so I can show you how to do that but you just have to go back and forth till you get there and then the back panel is done all the way to the top just like you see. So the back doesn't have an indentation down. And when we go to join this, the front and the back will join at the shoulders there. So let's show you how to do the body section from after the ribbing is complete. So you're going to be looking at your ribbing section. I finished on the wrong side and I can tell by this. And so now you're just gonna chain one and you're gonna equally space out your single crochets all the way across. So for the front and the back panel, it's 65 all the way to 105, depending on your size. And for the sleeves, it's 35 all the way to 45. So just equally space out your stitches, make sure that you count and then double count after it and just equally make it happen to the count that you see in the pattern. So please do that and I would count out loud to yourself. So this is three, four, and five. And just try to do your best to equally space it across. So I've come across my sleeve. I have 35 stitches altogether. You could have had up to 45. And if it was the front or the back panel, it's up to the other um, information that we talked about. I want you to remove the stitch marker out at this point. And what I need you to do is just push this, uh, pull this aside for a moment, and we're gonna place it back in where it makes sense for the rest of the pattern, but just hold it off to the side for now. Turn and work, and we're going to begin row number one. This is row number one of the body. This is not part of the repeat. So you're going to begin and you're going to, I'm going to give you some information of just chain two. It does not count as a stitch. And then just go right into the very first one that is coming out of and just a half double crochet in. You're then going to skip just one stitch and then put two half double crochets in the next. And you're going to do that all the way across. Okay, so, so now once you have that one done, you're going to skip one and then put two half double crochets in the next. So please do this all the way across for row number one of the front and the back panel. And I'll see you on the other side in just a moment. When you get all the way across on row number one, you're gonna skip the next one and just put in one half double crochet in the final. Okay, so it will bowl out like this because you want this to be stretchy. So if it looks like that on the front, the back, or the sleeves, you're doing it right. 
Let's begin row number two and three, which is the repeat then for most of the panel until we have to start shaping the armholes. Let's turn our work. And as we begin row number two, before you start, get that stitch marker now up. This is the right side. So we need to pay attention to this because we have to know where this is gonna be. So just put in your stitch marker so that it's hanging out the, the right side of the work. So this is the side that if people were looking at you, this is what they would see. So let's begin row number two. So row number two, you're going to chain two and you're going to half double crochet in the top of this one right here, the first one. And in row number two, you're going to place a half, uh, two half double crochets, like a V stitch kind of section in between this section right here. So you have to go beyond that and into here. It feels awkward, but it's right. So just trust yourself. So everything's in groups of two. Do you see that? See how kind of grouped together? You see that there's mini holes. So now you're just gonna jump to the next mini hole right here and put in two half double crochets there. And you're gonna do this all the way across. Okay, so just kind of separate it and you will see the granny square look come up, but it's gonna be nice and tight because it's half double crochets. So I'll show you how to finish row number two in just a moment. When you're coming all the way across, see this space right here before the end? There looks like there's two stitches here, but that's that chain two that doesn't count as anything. Make sure you go into the space before that with two half double crochets. And then you're gonna half double crochet in the top of that to finish off row number two. So you're going to notice is that in one row, it's gonna be solid like this towards the end of the row and the other row is gonna have the gapping spaces, which, which, which is what you're looking for. Let's turn our work and do row number I wanna call your attention. You're now looking at the wrong side of the work. You can tell by this, and this is how you start row number three. So chain two, and you're going to half double crochet into the first one. Do you notice how it's more solid underneath here and the gapping spaces over here? That's where you're gonna play. So just reach on over and put in your two half double crochets into that space. And what this is doing, when you do this, it's creating a space that you'll see in the future, just like you saw down here. So you see the space, solid, space, solid. And so whenever you do a row number three, that's what's gonna happen. So jump to the next space then, because you've now established your, your distance from the edge, and you're gonna go all the way to the other side. So please do this. This is row number three, and I'll see you at the other side. So I'm coming up all the way across. And so you can see underneath it's more solid. So you just have to go right to your last half double crochet to in order to create the space that you need. Okay, and you'll see the space coming in in the future. So it's again, it's a space, solid, space, solid, and etc. And this is the end of row number three. So you're looking at the wrong side, which is important detail. So all you just need to do now is to repeat rows number two and three until you get to the arm hole um, section. And I'm gonna be pointing that out in just a second on the pattern. So here in the pattern, we need to do rows number two and three all the way until the pattern measures a total of 15 to 17 inches, depending on size. So that includes the ribbing that you did and also um, the, the main body itself. We're now going to shape the armholes. This is for the front and the back, this section here. And then you are going to then pay attention to the double asterisks here. So once we shape the armholes, then for the front pan or for the back panel, you're going to then continue the distance until it measures a total of either 23 all the way to 26 and a half inches. So on the back panel, there's no um, shaping for the, the actual um, arms itself. It's just gonna be a flat panel right to the very top. And so you'll see that. So what this double asterisk is, is that when you go to do the front panel, it says work double asterisk to the double asterisk right here. And what this is, is that you're gonna go back to the double asterisk and you're gonna complete the front all the way to this level. And then once you get there, instead of doing this information, you are going to continue the pattern until it measures either 20 to 23 and a half inches. And then the front panel that we have has all the shaping of the neck. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to show you how to shape the armholes and those are for both of the, the front and the back for this section right so let's shape the armholes and i finished on the wrong side which is right here but i ended my yarn so that i could do all my advanced work so we have the ribbing and here and therefore we can do the shaping of the armhole so i'm just joining new yarn here but you will technically not you'll just continue the information 
as it's saying. So I'm just going to join and then I'll weave in my tails later. So if you're shaping the armholes, what we are here is that you're going to slip stitch over a certain amount of stitches to create an indentation. And you're gonna either do seven all the way through 15, depending on the size. Once you do that, you're going to chain two and half double crochet in the same space as the last stitch. And then you're going to put two half double crochets in the next space between the last half double crochet and the next group of two half double crochets. So you're going to just think about that. So it's giving you the number of these, um, the, the groups. It's giving you the number that you have of the groups that makes it a lot more easier in order to follow. So you'll have 25 groups, 28, 31, 32, 36, or 37. And then once you have that done, you'll have this. So you need to leave um, the last remaining stitches unworked once you get to that point. So you're technically only using 54 all the way to 78 stitches, depending on the size. I know it sounds complicated, but it's a lot easier than it, that basically I'm making it sound. Let's begin and try. So right where I am, pretend that you did not fasten off like I did. And what I'm going to do is slip stitch in the first seven. So choose the number that you had. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Here's a tip for you. The seventh one is the one that you're working with. So if when you get to the other side, the last six in this case will be um, left empty. And so if you have the other information that you had, whether it was all the way through 15, it's the same information. So it's whatever number it is. So in this case, seven minus one will give you the number six, which then gives you how many that will be empty on the other side. Once you're here, you're going to chain two and you'll have to crochet in the same spot. And then it's telling you to jump right here. Okay, and then you're gonna start and do your two half double crochets into the same one. So you're just maintaining the pattern as you see it so it looks like it's the same, okay? So what I want you to do is go all the way to the other side, okay? And we don't wanna go right to the end as I mentioned. So we wanna make sure that we're stopping at the right spot to leave the remaining empty on the other side. So I'm coming up all the way. I do have my 25 groups of these two half double crochets and that was as per the pattern. So you could have up to 37. So you're just gonna skip one. The first one is right here and you're gonna go right here for your last half, to half double crochet. Okay, just like you see. And so then the remaining that you'll have, in my case it was six, will be left empty. So now we have established the new length of the distance of both of your panels. And so let's begin to do the next two rows just to show what you need to do next. To stay consistent with the pattern, I've turned my work. We had a space here. This one should be a solid in order to keep it aligned properly. So when you go to do this then, is that you are going to chain two and you'll have double crochet in the first one. So this would be on the chart a number three, the road three. And so you're just gonna immediately jump into this space right here. So do you see that it was space, solid. This has to create a space. So you just half double crochet in the first and then jump over the first two half double crochets like that to create the space. And so you see the space, solid space. And so now you're just gonna go all the way across with what you already know and I'll see you on the other side in just a moment. To be consistent with the other side, once you get this one in here, you were just going to half double crochet in the top of the first one here. So you have to keep that, see, space, solid space. So now you're gonna turn your work and do the next row. So like before, you look below to what is happening. So you chain two and then you half double crochet in the first. You can see that there is a space directly below. So now we're gonna fill that in with two half double crochet and then we jump over the, the next one here. Okay, we're gonna do this all the way across and then we're gonna talk repeating. So I'm coming all the way across, I'm coming into the space before the end and then we have the crochet in the end. So let's talk repeating and for the back panel, you're just gonna go back and forth doing the same information. Let me just back you out a little bit here. 
And so you're going to be just going through this distance here instead of the whole thing. And it actually works out really quite lovely. And we are going to do this all the way to the top. Now, if you were doing the back panel here, you were going to just continue to do this until it measures um, either 23 inches tall or 26 and a half inches tall and all the measurements in between refer to the pattern and then you're going to finish on the wrong side of the row and you're going to fasten off so the back panel does not have any special um, indentations in it it just goes right up as a flat edge just like you see now for the front panel if you're working on it we have to go to a certain amount of dimensions before so that we can create this dipping down that you see that the model is having and we're going to be talking about that next so we're now going to um, jump our way up until we get on the front panel until we get to a certain size and we'll be talking about that in just a moment for those that are working on the front panel now you're going to take the information i just showed you and you're not going to go as tall as the back panel you're going to stop early here on the beginning of the neck so the distance of that between the bottom and the top here it says in the pattern it's either going to be 20 inches all the way to 23 and a half choose the number and you need to end on a wrong side row but do not uh, fasten off your work so you're going to just go back and forth until you get to either 20 uh, 22, 23 and a half, and make sure that you're on the end of a wrong side row. And then we're going to start shaping the neck from that particular point. So just continue to go back and forth. And that's where I'll pick you up in a few minutes. So right now I'm on the front panel, but if you were doing the back, you would be much higher than this. And I'm currently at the distance that I need. So in my case, it was 20 inches from the very base. I'm on the wrong side and I can tell by the stitch marker that I left that this is the right side of the work. So now we're gonna start and we're going to begin shaping the neck and we're gonna do the first row. So let's right. turn our work and begin shaping the neck. So the shaping of the neck is gonna happen right here. We're only gonna just use a portion of here. We'll leave the middle blank and we'll finish the other side after that. So we're gonna concentrate on making this bigger. So as we begin shaping the neck, we're going to chain two and we're gonna half double crochet in the first, half double crochet, and then two half double crochet in the, in the next space and etc. So you will have, so that there's either six, seven, nine, nine, 11 or 11 of the groups of half double crochet. And then you are then just gonna work your way across. Okay, so this is the interesting thing about this is that you're not gonna put that extra half double crochet in the ends that you have been doing for either the sleeves or the the main body of the front and the back. Let's begin this next. So let's begin shaping the neck, chain two, and you're gonna half double crochet in the first half double crochet, and you're gonna half double crochet into the space that's directly below. And so in my case, there will be six groups of those. So that was one, and you're gonna do the next one, two, next one, three, next one is four, Next one is five, next one is six. So if you have to do seven or nine or 11 of those, then please do that. And this is what it will look like. So it's just a little piece like that. Let's begin. So you're leaving all the rest of it empty. You're just gonna turn your work and just work on this shoulder here. And let's begin. And it says chain two counts as the first half double crochet. I want you to look to what's underneath of it to be able to determine what to do. Okay, so we have the half double crochet there. You can see that there's a space. And so we are going to put in the half double crochets in the space. And you're gonna do this all the way across. So regardless of the distance set, uh, if you have more than just six groups, it'll be the same information. Just it'll be long, it'll be wider, that's all. Okay, and once you get into this space here, you're going to then half double crochet into there, the last one. And that was row number two, is turn your work and do row number three. Row number three, we're going to begin and chain two, half double crochet in the first and look to what's underneath to make sense of it. You see that there's a space, so fill that in. So in this case, you're either gonna put four, five, seven, seven, nine, or nine. So in my case, it'll be four. So there'll be four groups of half double crochets. So one, two, three, and 
four. Okay, so once you have this one done, you're just gonna go into your very last one here. It says two half double crochets in the last space before the end. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So let's turn to work and begin number four. Row number four, you're going to chain two and you're just looking to where the information is for the spacing underneath. And you can see that it's right there. So you're just gonna put in two half double crochets and then just maintain the jump all the way across. And then here, you're just going to go into the last one here. So it creates that space that you're looking for. Turn your work, and let's do word number, number five. You're going to chain up two, and you're going to half double crochet in the first one, and then also into the space that's next. So you put two in there and start jumping across, and there will be four in a row. So one, two, and the four is just my number. So you could have five, seven, seven nine or nine so so you're gonna go four and then it says put the half double crochet in the last one here so you can see it's going this don't worry about this at this moment and you're going to notice that when you do the your your um, collar it's going to balance itself out so let's begin and turn and do row number five row number five you just chain two half double crochet in the first one into the space underneath and start jumping across. And my case there's gonna be four in a row. Okay, and then you're just gonna go right into the last one. Turn your work and let's do row number six. So let's turn our work and begin number six chain two which will count as a half double crochet in this case and it says just to put two half double crochets into the first one and then you start jumping yourself across into the spaces that you see and then you'll do one half double crochet into the end piece over here Turn and work, and let's do number seven. Number seven, chain two, and then put one into the first, and then just keep, and do the space underneath, so there'll be two in there, and you're just gonna jump yourself across. And then you'll put one in the end, like there. And then we're gonna turn and work and do our last row, number eight, in just a moment. Let's turn and work and do number eight. Finally, in number eight, you're just gonna chain two counts as your first half double crochet and put two into the first one. And then start jumping across. And this is where the story will end. And you're gonna fasten off and this is the one shoulder complete. half double crochet right into the end. And this is where you're gonna fasten off and leave it as is. So now I want you to continue and we're going to move on to the next shoulder in just a moment. One thing before you do that, make sure that you just leave a long tail here and you can use that tail to sew it to the back panel so you don't have to add any additional yarn later. So it's already attached and ready. So we're now going to move to the next section right here and we're going to start with this shoulder right here for and we're going to go one through eight once again the difference is is that we're going to be on this side so right where you're looking at it you're looking at the right side of the work the one shoulder is done and so we need to skip a certain amount of stitches but what i want you to look for just in case something went wrong on you um, what i do for myself is that i look where this is and i try to make sure it's balanced so i want to see and count the number of these spaces so one two three four five six okay so i know that i'm six in from the edge so if i come to this side i'm going to say one two three four 
five, and six. And so that's exactly where I want to start. So it says to skip a certain amount of stitches to get there, but if something is wrong, this is the best way to do it because then you know both of your shoulders will be the same uh, distance in the width. So this is where I would start if I were you and you were me. So let's begin row number one, and we're going to start with fresh yarn. Okay, so starting with fresh yarn, I'm just going to make a mental note of that. Just put holding it there and just put in that on, and I'm going to join. And what they want you to do when you join, chain two, that will count as a first half double crochet, and they want you to half double crochet again in. So it's counting as two half double crochets. So you're going to complete then across and just start jumping the spaces, just like you know to do. And you should just know that the one side is pretty much flat, while the, this side will do an indentation a little bit, just like you saw on the other side. So you're just gonna jump across and you should have the same amount of stitches in gapping spaces that you had on the other side. So I'm coming right in and then half the crochet in the turning. So before I go any further and get carried away, I wanna make sure that it looks the same. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm good to go and I'm gonna move to row number two. Turn your work and let's do that. Let's do row number two. You're gonna chain up two counts as your first half and then just do exactly what you saw on the other side. So just refer to what you're seeing here and just make sure that you mimic the way that it looks. And so I'm just gonna go all the way across. Okay. And I'm gonna go right into, I hit the last space here, and I'm just gonna put two half double crochets in there and just re leave the remaining of the work empty. And now we're going to move on to row number three. Row number three, they want you to chain up two, counts as a half double crochet, and just come right in below and fill those in. And you're gonna go right to the very edge on the other side. one in with a half double crochet and that was row number three turn your work and let's do number four so in this case we want to stop at the last space before the end here and so row number four you're going to chain two and you're going to half double crochet in the first and then you're just going to come into the next space that you see and you want to stop in the last space in row number four we're going to begin and chain two and, and we're gonna half double crochet in the first. You're just maintaining the stitch work that you already can see. So you're gonna jump on over here and just put in your two halves. And you're gonna do this right to the edge on the other side. Coming into the space here. And then just half double crochet into the last stitch. And that was row number four. Let's turn your work and do number five. So we're just continuing straight on up. So you're just gonna chain up two and that counts as the first half double crochet and then come into the space in between below. And just keep on going across with what you already know. So you're really only decreasing just a little bit and then just continuing to straight panel up if you really wanna think of it from that perspective. And you'll have double crochet in the final there. Okay, let's turn it work and do the next row. Okay, row number six, you're going to chain two and you'll have double crochet in the first and you're just gonna maintain with what you can see below. This is actually take two for me. I got all the way and I missed a row by accident. And how I could tell that is that my ending strand should have been on the same side of the project and it wasn't. And I'll explain that more in a bit. So I'm just maintaining with what I already see. And that was row number six. Turn to work and do number seven. Number seven is just chain two and that counts as the first half double crochet and then we just come into the space directly below. 
I'm not sure why that is, but there's obviously a method to the madness. So we have to just keep the madness going. So coming on over here and we're just gonna have double crochet in the final. So you should be able to count eight rows. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we just got one more row to go and let's just chain up two. Okay, we're gonna have double crochet in the first and then jump on over. So we have to finish on row number eight. And then half the crochet in the final. Okay, that's it. So you're done this side and we're just gonna trim. Make sure that when you trim, you leave a long enough tail so that you can use it to sew to the back panel as well and it should look identical. Now just look at this here. This is not um, looking quite the same, but it is the same stitch count. I just might've been a little bit more sloppier with that. But once you do your first um, around on the collar, you're gonna see that it will make a lot more sense. So what I want to do now is that I wanna move on to the sleeve area and just quickly show you that. And that's our next step. So we're now back here with the sleeve. So I've already shown you how to do the ribbing and we did the first one across and it was the amount of the stitches that you needed. It was either 35, 41 or 45 stitches. We're then going to pick up the pattern and we're going to begin this section right here. And then the repeat is three, four, five. You can see the way I did it as I explained it before and you're gonna get that done a certain amount of times. So you'll notice that it is, is actually not gonna to be too hard once you get your brain hooked in, but I definitely recommend that you check it off on a list to make yourself um, do this a lot easier. So like the front and the back panel, we're gonna get ourselves established and we're going to chain two and we're going to half double crochet in the first. Skip one and then put two halves in the next. So at this point in the tutorial, if you're following it along, this stuff should be a lot easier for you to be able to manage because you've already done it twice if you've done the front and the back panel at this point. So go all the way across and I'll meet you at the end of the row in a moment. So coming all the way across, you'll skip the next one and just go right into the last with a half double crochet. You're gonna turn your work and what I want you to do before you go any further is that I want you to place a stitch marker on this side of the work and this will tell you what the right side of the work is because you have to follow the sequence and end on a wrong side like you have been with everything else. So we're now going to begin uh, row number three, four, and five, which is going to be the repeat for eight times um, after it's done once. So you have to do a, a total sequence of nine times. So let's begin row number three. Whenever you have a row number three, you're going to chain two and you'll half double crochet in the first. And then you were going to jump over here. So this is considered a solid, just remember that. And then you're just gonna start jumping with your half double crochets your groups of those all the way to the other side. And I'll show you how to finish a row number three in just a moment. When you get across on row number three, it feels wrong because it looks like there's a gap because you've just started below, but in the future, it will not look at that obvious. And you're just gonna jump on over the last group and just half double crochet in the final. Turn our work and let's do row number four. Whenever you do number four, it's going to be an increase row. So we're going to increase the, the V stitchers or the groups of two. So you're gonna chain two, doesn't count as anything, and you're going to place in, in the top of this half double crochet, two more half double crochets. So two into the top of that, and then into the space right underneath, put two into that one as well. Remember that there's two groups here at the front of this, because you'll have to separate those out in row number five. So once that's in, start jumping across, and I'll show you how to finish when you have a row number four. When you get to the end of number four, you have a space and the final half double crochet. So in the space, put in two half double crochets and in the very final half double crochet, put two into that one as well. It feels wrong, but that's how you're doing the increase. Let's turn and work and do row number five. Whenever you have number four below, number five is kind of a little bit complicated just for a few times that you do it and then you get it. So chain two and half double crochet into the first one. You were then going to see the two groups here. You have two halves here and two halves here. Go into the space in between and put two half double crochets in there. So you've now just created that extra set that you needed. 
Okay, and now come in and jump across. And I'll show you how to finish row number five in a moment. When you get to the other side on row number five, so you got you can see that there's two groups of two here. Come in here. And so you go in between there with two there, and then in the very last one, you'll put in a half double crochet. So now you just have to turn your work and repeats number three, four, and five, and do it a repeat of eight more times from this point. And I would check that off in the list, but eventually it's not gonna be long enough for your arm. So I'm gonna be talking about that next. Once you repeat this amount of eight times, you're going to notice is that you wanna continue the even stitching of the ribbing until the arm measures 17 and a half inches. It could be as low as 16. So um, there's different sizes depending on what you're working on. So after you do row number five here in the chart, did you notice that I put an arrow here? So after the ninth repeat, you immediately start on row number two and three and you keep alternating between the two and you make sure that you end on a wrong side that when you're, or you gotta just make sure that you end on a wrong side, I suppose. Just make sure that both of the sleeves are equal to each other and that's where you're gonna begin. So I'm gonna show you rows number two and three as if that you finished that repeating of uh, doing that a total of nine times so that you can get yourself back into balance. And so even though it's growing out like this, that will then straighten out and then it'll be part of the shoulders in, a, in the future. Let's begin row number two and three. So after you've done your repeating a certain amount of times, you wanna go back to row number two in the diagram on the body, and you're just gonna chain up two and half double crochet in the first. And you can see in row number two, you're skipping over the first grouping of two half double crochets, and you're just gonna jump your way across like that. So this will put you back into balance like you did on the front and the back panel of just going straight up the sides and I'll see at the end of row number two. And at the end of row number two, you have to skip over the last grouping of two here and go right in, and then turn your work and we'll begin row number three. In row number three, you're going to chain two, half double crochet in the top. You'll notice that there's a gap now underneath, fill that in, and so it's exactly what you already know at this point. And you'll notice that the growth of the sleeve will stop and just work its way, and you just keep going back and forth until you get to the dimension that you need for the length of the sleeves. And you'll do this for both of your sleeves. Um, it takes a bit of time to do uh, the sleeve work, uh, but it will wrap around your arms. It'll feel like it looks big until you start putting things together and you realize it's the right size. So you're gonna do this, and I will be back in just a moment. So here's one sleeve here. I have two sleeves, of course, already done. And so they are both exactly the same and I put them over top of each other to make sure of that. And that's something that you can do for yourself. And so we're now going to head on to assembly once all these components are done and we'll worry about the neck and stuff later. So once all four panels are made, I want you to put them onto a table or a flat surface. And I want you to put them so that the wrong sides are facing up. You can tell the wrong side because I had you mark what was the right side, so the right side markings should all be on the underside. So you're looking technically at the inside of the of this. What I want you to do, grab a piece of yarn and I want you to start attaching it to each of the pieces. So just start bringing it together and do bow ties and be able to do that next. So make little mini strands. You can keep making them. And you're just going to attach the corners to the corners. And then just do a bow tie just to hold them temporarily. Okay, so do that on this side and then we'll talk about the sleeves in just a moment. We're now going to attach the sleeves in. According to what I can see in the model, this corner here goes to this peak here. So it goes right into the system, so right into the corner. So we're just going to attach using a bow tie. You're then going to come up here and do the same thing. If it's a little bit too big, you can always just kind of sew in a way that it makes sense. So just make it work. Now that those two are secured, I want you to go in the middle one where it's naturally resting and secure that one in two. So this is preventing us from wanting to 
speed ahead and accidentally sew one side quicker than the other, it makes it more evenly spaced. Finally, I want you to go halfway in between, just where it's naturally resting, and do the same thing. And finally, one halfway in between here. Now I want you to repeat what you just learned here and do the same over here. Okay, now that I secured this side, I am just going to start attaching the shoulders. So all of this whole thing, I'm going to do a whip stitch. Some people prefer a mattress stitch, but I'm not going to get into that today. I just, what I want to do is I just want to put this onto a tapestry needle. Okay, and it's coming from this side and I just want to loop it over and come back. And as you att start attaching things, you can remove your stitch markers out as you pass them. Okay, and just make sure it's nice and tight and then jump back across and just evenly space it as best you can. So the stitch markers prevented you from just kind of eyeing it up yourself and just kind of making it work. The stitch markers by going into position now is that it's holding it exactly where you want it to be. So it's very possible that you may be missing a stitch or you just have to improvise a little bit, but that's the whole point of doing the stitch markers is to make it look good as is. So when you sew it, it'll look good too. So by sewing it here on the wrong side, what you're doing is you're, you're making all the attaching to appear on the inside of your sweater. Once you believe that you have it completely done, I want you to make sure that this ties itself into a knot on the inside of your, of this, so on this side. So let it tie a knot onto itself. And then what I want to do is just stay on the back side here and just weave in the strands and don't allow it to go to the good side of the work, the right side. When you pull for the very first time, don't change the shape of your top. Just be firm, but don't be over tugging. And of course, if you're not comfortable, you can add more knots if you want to. So for the side pieces here, you won't have the stitch to match to each other. So you just gotta go into the edge and just make it look really good. So I'm going to do another shoulder here, or the next shoulder in just a few moments. So what I wanna concentrate on, when I go to sew in the, the sleeves, I'm going to start here on the corner, follow it around and then go straight across and then go across and then just do the little indentation just like that. So I want you to do all the sewing and I'll be right back in just a moment and then we'll talk about doing this, the sleeves and then the, the sides as well. I've sewed both sides now and I'm gonna just take it up at the shoulders and I'm just gonna pick it up and put it down. So I'm still looking at the inside of the, of the sweater here. And what I want to do at this point is just fold it so that the sweater, that the sleeves will be folded directly in half. And everything is lining properly on the sides. Use those stitch markers and now start lining stuff up and just continue like you did. So just start off with the underarm area. And pull it together. And then go down to the base and pull it together at the very bottom. And then just evenly space your stitch markers up. I would do one, two, three, maybe four. And then do the same thing with the sleeves. It just come right out to the edge, match them up and do one, two, three. And then just do that and do that on both sides and then begin to sew along the underside and down the sides next. So do that on your own and I'll be right back. So I have all the pieces now put together. I just have the collar to do. 
I still inside out at this moment, but I'm not sure what to do with the collar. So when we come back, we'll have that all figured out and then we'll get that done. And then this sweater is then complete. So let's do the collar. The collar is just using the same yarn, same hook, and you're going to chain seven and you're going to do single crochet, second chain from the hook, and then one single crochet uh, in the rest of those. And so then you'll have six single crochets. You'll turn your work and then chain one and do one single crochet in the back loop only. So you're gonna end up with a strip and there's no dimension for it. They want you to be able to have it so it looks like it's stretched. So you just keep making that band long enough so that it can go around the complete per perimeter of your neckline. Make sure it's slightly stretched so that you have that play with it. And so you're just going to follow it around and then you're going to turn, once that's done, you're going to uh, fasten off and you're going to turn this to the inside of your sweater and starting on the one shoulder here, you're going to attach and just sew it along the edge evenly all the way around and just make sure that it looks good. So when you have it, it should look very much like the model's example of just being able to um, come up and just kind of follow the neckline. And that's a really ni e nice, easy way. Make sure you do sew it though on the back side of the of it so that the joining uh, appears on the inside of the, the sweater itself. And so it's a nice, easy way to be able to finish this project. And overall, it's an easy project as a whole.